Right, so Python has some 1 to 5, you can say, right, uh, tokens or the lexical units. Now, if we write up the things here, and the smallest individual, if you write, would be better. Individual in a program, and also called as lexical unit. All right. Now, what all the tokens in the Python we have? So the very first we see has to be keywords. Then we say identifiers. I will be defining it all, okay? And identifiers are nothing but the names if we define the very short things, okay? Next we say literals. Then we have the operators. And then we say punctuators. Okay, all these are the tokens in the Python. All right, now let's make a simple program and then we'll make you understand what are the keywords and identifiers and letters and operators and punctuators. All right, so I hope everyone would have installed this. Right, okay, so. The very first thing, right, as a sample program I make, if my I and divided by two deep segmented or zero, I will be printing C I. So I get the results zero two four six till there, right? Okay, let's shorten this. So I get it two four six and eight, right? This is a very simple program, sample program, right? Uh, after this, we'll be going through what are the keywords here. All the things has been used, basically. The keywords, identifiers, the literals, the punctuators, and the operators, everything, right? So we'll go on it later on. Let's, okay? Now, now, what are keywords if we define the things? Like, if uh, many of you have done also the programming, and also if we go with that, what are keywords? If the question comes like, the keywords right in the Microsoft examinations you will be having very quick questions you have to solve it very quickly anyone can tell what are keywords like in any other language also keywords has the same meaning so what are keywords so basically keywords are predefined that they are being predefined in the system itself and they have a specified task which they perform Hmm. Predefined words. So we'll say as some reserved names and or reserved names that are already present in. If we are discussing Python, we'll say already present in Python. Okay. And they are what you can say predefined someone says right it's predefined okay. okay now how many keywords are there in the python yeah anyone quickly okay anyway. so then, right if we go for uh, counting it right there are 35 okay now what 35 are there we can just go with the help of this keywords okay so all the list of keywords has been appeared here right so nine in a row and then four columns okay so 36 and there is a one missing over there so 36 minus one here 35 over there. okay now for getting more info of any keywords you'll be writing help and in the codes you can write that keyword name and you'll find it okay otherwise there is a model for the keyword where you can just import it like import keyword 
and then you can print keyword dot kw list so all the list of the keywords are there okay right there are all these excuse me so what is yeah. excuse me so hmm. yeah ask kw list which you have used here hmm. uh, a kw list what is you asking yes sir that is keyword. what is kw list that is keywords list what here you are getting is actually all the keywords okay and this is inscribed in a list okay we'll be learning in the data type of the python list okay this is inside a list see inside one bracket one and then this this is a list bracket okay so we are getting a list of keywords so that is why it is keywords list okay All right, so keyword has got a lot of modules. If you want to see the directory of keyword, you can go with that too. With the definitions, you'll be getting a remote here. Awesome. Has been okay, that is great. Yeah. So these are things that is, is keyword, you can go with that. KW list, you can go. And the things, yeah. So two things are there, KW list, which gives you a list of keywords, and then is keyword. What is there in the group? Someone is asking for the link. Okay, you can share the same link. See guys, same link will be there throughout the things, right? To whatever your class goes, same link would be there. Okay, if I change, I'll let you know. Okay. So there is S keyword. Now what is that? Like if there is a keyword you want to check, right? So you cannot name your variables and all the things with the keywords, right? So if you want to change it, how will it? Let's say if I say that a book is a keyword or not, I want to check. So how to check it basically? So I'll write print book is keyword. Of okay, just a minute. All right. So it says false. That is, book is not a keyword. Right. So what all keywords are there? Only this much. Right. Now all the deep green things would you find? Here would be the keywords most of the times, right? So you can find it here also. Like you see, import is in the deep green, so it is a keyword. See, import, right? All the deep green would be what you find in the anaconda would be here. Here in the Jupyter would be a keyword. The light green colors would you'll find would be a fun functions, okay? The red ones would be the strings. If you go with the very easy way to understand it, right? Like if I say for, see here in the things there you can find three keywords such as one two and three and here you can see the function and the numbers see the purple is giving you the operators all right all right so same if i go for for finding for for so i'll be writing as keyword dot this keyword and then for and for is a keyword that giving you a true result Right, so true gives you true and false will be giving you false. Okay. Now the second, that is keyword is clear, I hope, right? Next we have identifiers and literals and operators, okay? Okay, now it comes with the literals. Now if you define literals, these are the data items which are having a fixed or a constant values. Okay, fixed or constant values then like with the constant you can say 25, 26 or any particular values, right? So we'll say these are the data items 
remove it. Fix. Array. Constant values. Having fixed error. Constant values. Now it can be of different types, right? String literals. That is anything under quotes. like this it can be double quote single quote okay next we can use as a numeric which you can define as like 1 2.5 right we'll be lying it right then 60 anything like numerics okay next it can be a boolean boolean string uh, booleans can be in two ways right that is either true or false or it can be 1 and 0 what we see in the uh, what is that all is discrete values right and then we can use some special literal names like none or a tuple okay we'll be learning this ahead now okay so these are literals right so here in the above program for in the for one you can find easily that all these were the keywords if i go with the program again so these three things in the deep we can find as a keywords and next all uh, like uh, the data items like with the fixed values if i say so 1 10 0 2 right these are the literals okay right identifiers also we have discussed identifier have we discussed no so if we talk about the identifiers then identifiers are the name given to the different part of the program Right? names like it can be variables okay so these are the names given to the different part of your codes or your programs it can be a variable it can be an object or it can be a function it can be a list or it can be a dictionary right so based on the different things of a program you can name it right so I'll write it to So like if I write for i in something, then i is my identifier, okay, like that, all right. Next there are operators. And punctuators, two things. Are now, operators are the tokens that trigger some of the computation or some of the actions which are applied to the variables or the functions right in the functions not all the functions okay so there are various type of operators let me write some of the things right uh, here I can write this. So I'll be using short name, right? So like arithmetic operators. Now it can be plus, minus, right? All these basics. We'll be discussing it today. Then we can have assignment operators. Now, assignment operators can have like uh, equals to 
okay it can have plus equals to like that okay. assigning the values then we can have comparison operators so you can compare the things less than greater than okay not equals to equals to then we have the identity operators there we go with is or is not that's it only okay next we go with the logical operators the logicals you go with and or or and not or you go with the not that's it these are the symbols what I have used here. Okay. Next, you can go with the membership operators. So it would be is and is not has grown. So that will be in and not in. Then there would be some relational operators. So relational and comparison are basically the same because there we have the relations right you have then bitwise also and then you have shift also come in the bitwise right so all these operators are there and we'll be going it through okay let's see messages somewhere okay, yes now so uh, we'll go with the punctuators now so op operators will be going it So punctuators are the symbols that are used in any programming language, let it be in any language, okay? So to organize some sentence or the structures of your code, whatever the symbols you use are called as punctuators, okay? So we'll just write it as the symbol used in the codes. Very simple. Now it can be and hashtag it can be double quotes it can be brackets right it can be colons like this all these things okay right so i believe all the five different type of the tokens right the parts would be clear to you any part is not clear you can say right so keywords where the things which are reserved and you cannot use other variables okay then identify came as with the names then the literals having the fixed values operators we have discussed and at last punctuators so in this five any problems to anyone any doubts no Next, we start up with comments in Python. Okay, now comments are basically used to describe a block of code. Or whatever the code you write, if you need to describe it, will be using the comments. Here also, just a minute. How many students are there in Python match? All right, so comments would be used as a 
definition or used as to describe a block of code. Okay. Now if I run this, I'll get an error. Space. Right. So that yeah. So you are, your screen is getting zoomed in. We are not able to see the whole code which you are typing or explaining to us. It's just showing the punctuator part on the top and the white. Right. It's fine now. Still not, sir. Sir, kindly please. Should I have to zoom in or zoom out? So zoom out, sir. Okay, it is fine now. Now clear or having okay. So these will be used to describe a block of code. Now these are of two types. Is, is it clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. So these are of two types. Now very first is your single line comment. Okay, and the very next is your multi line comment. Now, oh, okay, yeah, it's it's fine. Okay. now. So these comments will be never giving you any outputs, right? So if you if you are printing something, if you say print any comment, print any line like like this, so you'll get the output, right? With the same statement, if I say print all this, you're not going to get any outputs because comment are never going to give you any outputs, okay? So you're not going to get any output for comments. Okay. All right. So all what you are going to do with the comments is just to describe your codes. If if you're making any projects, you need to describe it. You're gonna write the things over there, right? That is all just important for your comments. Okay. So that is a comment. Now coming up to the variable sections. Right? So what does variables represent? So we say variables represent the reserved storage. Okay. And are used to store some value stacks. That is the main purpose of this. Okay, like if I say x is equals to 20, so x is a variable which is having a reserved storage now. Like if, I, if after I run this, right, like this, now it is having a storage, it has got an ID that is a memory location of x, it's this, right? Okay, this is the memory location that is being stored, that x value is being stored in this location, right? And there is a value 20 which is being stored. So X has got some reserved storage and it has got some values too, right? So that is exactly a variable. It can hold any values, right? It can hold something uh, in integer, float and anything, right? We'll be going on it later on also, okay? So variables can hold values, right? If I say like uh, A, B, A is equals to 25, B equals to uh, 32.5 and then C is equals to machine. Right, so all these are the variables basically. So I can print it even. So I'll be printing like a, b, c. You'll see the values 25, 32.5, and the machine. Okay, 
these are the things right okay moving ahead then there are some data types in python right so very basic types uh, and the type uh, of the numbers if we go right the numeric data type if we go with that in the data types then we are going through the things the numeric data type i want to say basically so in the numeric data type there are three things the integer float and complex okay now if we define the uh, integers so we'll say all the whole numbers or basically the whole numbers now why all the whole numbers so whole numbers are the integers okay integers would be the whole numbers so no decimals and all right you understand what whole numbers is and the type of these numbers are basically i'm just writing the type with just a sharp name. type would be int integer okay all right this would be the type now if i define up the things like a and like a small a b c d a b c and d let's say okay it can be 12 13 14 15 okay i like guess and if we see any value a b and if i go to see the type to for type i'll be using a type function i'll like type of c so i see the values of oh, just a minute so 12 13 and the class of integer integer type okay same there is a function uh, sorry there is the another type for us float now float are the real numbers that includes fractions decimals and all right has got to be u yes and it has got the type of float Is it thirty five point five three thirty two point zero? If I don't write anything, it would be an integer. So I have to write something for making a float. And like E and the type of F. Thirty five point five and float are the values, right? So that is called multiple assignments. What I am doing right now, assigning various uh, types, various. Uh, yesterday we did something called as dynamic semantics, right? Someone asked the question, what is dynamic semantics? Like that. So we are assigning a lot of numbers at a time and adding other things. Okay. All right. Now, the next type is the complex one. Complex type. These are a combination of real plus imaginary. In the format of A plus BJ. And the type would be complex, obviously. Okay. Like if I say D is equals to 45 J. And B is equals to 45 plus 89j. So I'll be printing the d and e. You'll find the results as 45j and 45 plus 89j. Right? And if I also see the type, sorry, uh, yeah type of D and then what is the imaginary and what is the real part sorry F has not got anything E has got it 
So you find that 45j, 45 plus 89j, then it is a class of complex, and then 89 is the imaginary part, it is with j, and then 45 is the real part. So I hope that is clear. Okay. All right. So that is a complex one. Right. Next we have the random functions. Right. Random range and all that will be going on later onwards. Okay. Okay. Right now. We'll be going with the ar arithmetic operators. Okay. So uh, these are of six types. That is plus, minus, multiplication, division, less than sorry not lesson the uh, multiplication divisions integer divisions and the power okay so let me write it If I say my x and y are 5 and 10, or basically I'm just, I'm just writing other things, right? So, so very first, I'm defining it. The first one is the addition, what I'm doing here. 2 plus 3. Like this, okay? Next, it would be subtraction. Let us print 4 minus 5. Next, I'm doing multiplication. Next, the division. I'll run everything at once, right? So I'll find things better. 8 divided by 9. Or let's say 10 divided by 5. Next, doing integer. Or sometimes we also say float division. So print 10 divided divide by 5. And the last, ah, two are being left, I think. Right, so uh, this is your modulus. Or we basically call this the remainder. So print 100 when divided by 3 would leave it what it leaves basically then the x one or they say the power like this okay so all the things of arithmetic operators I have written right if I run this I'll get all the outcomes right so the very first, it, the addition, subtraction, the multiplication, the division, then integer division, what is the difference? 10 divided by 5 and then 5, right? So here what do you see? When it divides 10 divided by 5, giving uh, values as 2.0. The very next line, when it goes with an integer division, you find 2. So the difference is, when it comes for the integer value, you get the only the integer part. That is not 2.0. You only get it 2. All right. Next is your modulus, that is 100 when divided by 3 gives the remainder 1 and then 2 to the power of 5 is 32. That is clear to everyone? No doubts in the arithmetic operators? I hope if you have you can ask it, okay?
Next is this how it is being done, right? So that is particularly called as pipe casting. Now, now type casting has got two different ways. The very first is called as implicit type casting. If I make it right, and the second is got as explicit type casting. An implicit like 2 plus 3.5 if I say. So integer plus float is giving you a result of a float. So that is being automatically done. That is a type of an integer plus type of a float. Okay. What exactly the outcomes you are getting? Like if I if I define it like x is equal to 2. Okay. Y is equals to 3.5. z will be equals to x plus y okay so if i print the type of x the type of y and the type of z so what do you see kind of kind of little uh, just a minute so i see that a type of integer when combines with the type of float gives the result of a float. The same thing when you say the very very same line. Okay. Here, if I say that whatever the z comes will be a complex type. So if I write again the same things. Now you see an integer and a float is being added, but still the type is complex. Now this is time where we are giving the types. We we want that this type to be a complex. Now if I print the z, it would be 5.5 .5 plus 0j. No, no imaginary part, right? So that is the difference in the things. Okay. Next is the input function. Okay, here we actually uh, take input prompts the user to enter something that is its definition, right? So here basically we prompt the user to enter something. Okay, so we can write it as input command and you have to write the input function and then prompt whatever you want from the user so like entry if we write entry so if i print the input command i find it as henry and what is the type of this input command so it is a, a string now what are strings these are nothing but the characters written inside the quotes like here the red things okay so every time by default the types are string okay these are the things now in, in your assignment you will find some questions regarding to the calendar okay so that is a module will be going up but still today you'll be getting that question so how to find like it would be given like to print a calendar of a particular month or a particular year. So let, let's say if we want to print a calendar of this month. So this is November month, right? Okay, of 2020. So we will be importing the calendar. Okay, and then we'll be printing up calendar dot of a month. So which month like if we say 2020-11 so you'll be getting the November 2020 calendar very easy right with the same things if I say the calendar of a whole year 
we will be writing up like print the calendar of a complete year. So in the calendar module, we will be writing calendar dot calendar of a complete year, like next year, so 2021. So it would give you complete calendar. Don't worry, we'll be going in this module in detail. We'll be have a particular day for this library. Sorry, for this module even, right? Okay, so that is the things. Now with the same, the very next question, you'll be getting something regarding your systems. Okay, so that is your sys modules. Now what exactly sys does? It checks the version. In the very first day, I have done this, right? The version info, you can also get with that too, right? Using the version info, it says dot the version of info, version info. And sometimes in which path you are working, you can get that too using your says dot the path. So this is your path, right? Where exactly your files are being stored, right? And where you are working and the things, okay? So all these things are there in the says. Otherwise you can get the size and all, all right? So if we have learned integer, we have learned float and we have learned the complex. So if we go and find other things like uh, the size, you should also know the size of an integer, the size of a float and the size of a complex in Python. Okay, so we will say sys dot get size of an integer. So integer can be anything. It can be 32 or it can be 32,000, 32, 32 lakhs even, right? So all these are nothing but the integer, right? So integer size will be always 28 bytes, okay? Okay, and uh, float would be having this 24, okay, and then the complex would be having 32, right? So you should remember all these things, all right? So this is all for today. You'll be going through, okay? Uh, next, you'll be getting your drives and all. Let me stop your videos.